everyone, this is Gavin from Gavin's Gadgets and a while back Kodak um, under license um, came out with this phone, it looks like a camera, it's called the Ektra, I think that's how you pronounce it. So what's it like one year later, loads of software updates, probably a lot better from when it first came out, let's take a deeper look at this little baby. A closer look at the Kodak Extra. Open the box, reveals the phone hidden underneath this um, bit of cardboard. There was various protective back plates and plastic over the lens itself. In the box, you've got what you expect: power brick, um, USB C cable, which is good considering you may have expected to have the old micro USB. It does have a lanyard cable. A couple of quick start guides, nothing in it except on the back, you'll find the SIM ejector tool. Now, taking a closer look at the hardware of the phone, I'll show you first of all that you've got the SIM ejector tool here. I have got a ejector tool just to show you what that looks like very quickly. So you push that in, and what you have is nano SIM plus micro SD card, which is handy. I'll leave some specs, key specs on the screen as we're talking as well. Um, if you look a bit closely, the lens here does say it's a 21 megapixel 4K video. It's got PDAF and six axis optical image stabilization, Kodak Etra on their 26.5 millimeter six piece lens and Kodak label there. You've got the lanyard there, which is nice because you can connect up the lanyard cable into that. Um, two-stage shutter and it's got a nice feel to it, it's got a slight little button on it, um, power to turn it on, volume up and down and you've literally got here you have the um, type C connection which is quite nice to have that, um, your flash as well and it's got the headphone and mic there so it does have a three and a half mil headphone uh, jack. Now this has been updated quite a bit since it first came out so this is like one year later. So if we have a, and you'll see that you've got pretty much um, a stock um, sort of Android experience. Bring that a bit closer for you. Just adjust the zoom a little bit. Just to give that a little bit more clarity. Is that better or worse? Let's have a look. Um, there we go. So when you go into the app drawer, um, it's everything that you probably get on a near stock experience. It has obviously Android Pay, um, has antivirus, there's a backup um, and reset option. The camera is a Kodak affair, the gallery, and everything else is pretty much stock. As you can see, it's got Office Suite built in, but you don't need that. I'll uninstall that. Um, has some other Kodak for printing and software support, prints, Super 8, creating that sort of old fashioned look and sound recorder, but it really is pretty stock in terms of the actual um, experience. In terms of the phone, the very latest, to bring that a bit closer, um, that you have, it runs on Android 6. Um, the last update was the 5th of July, but I said when I first got this, it, had, it spent three hours going through one update after another. And the very last update actually added raw support into the actual camera as well. And every time we did the update, there was camera tweaks and improvements. So that was really good. So the problem is when these first early reviews came out, it probably wasn't too fair on it. So that's a folder with the actual um, uh, Kodak apps. But it, the main thing is you're buying it. It looks really nice. Um, it's very comfortable to hold. Don't really need a case for it at all, anything like that. But this is the camera interface it's very very straightforward um, here you have the different modes you've got auto um, you've got the flash option so i tap on that so it says um, I don't know if you can see it again it says off on auto or red eye removal so there's quite a few options as well you've got here you've got a timer three five ten seconds you can adjust straight on the fly whether you want 21 megapixels at 4 to 3, 16 megapixels, 16, 16 megapixels at 16 to 9, or 13 at 4 to 3, or 9 megapixels at 16 to 9. Um, 
You've got various other uh, reduction options as well and shows you how many shots are left on the internal memory. You can also switch between front and back cameras pressing that button. And so here you've got resolution time, timer, the, the little icon you saw before was object tracking. So just sort of going back um, on that, um, if I just go back, that's it. So you can just tap object room tracking on off on the fly, really nice and quick and easy. You've got show grid, geolocation, you can see all the different settings there for the um, size, anti-flicker, use volume key as, and you've got zoom, shutter, or, vol or just keep it as the volume. So, so back into that. Uh, flash, gone through the options there. And there is a tutorial if you're that way inclined. So fairly straightforward in terms of the, the sort of settings, that your initial settings you've got. The only way out of the camera app is hitting the X so you don't accidentally press anything. So you do have the shutter button here, we press the focus, press the button, and boom, it's taken the shot. I've got this on silent, just so I don't get notifications coming through. You've got the flywheel here, you can switch to the different modes. I'd absolutely love that. If that's too small for you to do, I'll just show you again. It's very easy. You just tap on the screen. Um, that wasn't what I was trying to do. I said you tap on the screen there and you can bring up the bigger version of the flywheel and then you can switch between the manual, HDR, landscape, portrait, macro, sport, night, bokeh, panorama, video. And then if we go to manual, you tap in the middle, it brings up um, the manual mode and at the bottom here you've got, um, let me just put something dark as a background so you can see. Um, yeah. You've got the various options for um, the manual side. Um, you've got um, control the shutter, and you can go all the way up to one second and down to one thousandth of a second. Uh, back in auto a second. Um, you've also got ISO control from 100 to 6400. You've got shutter control as well. Um, in terms of macro um, and what sort of focusing distance you want. What am I doing? What am I doing? Uh, and where's shutter speed? Uh, you've got white balance as well. You've also got the exposure you can control and you can reset everything. I think I actually had the shutter speed on a fast shutter speed. If I tap the control here, say Smart Auto is the one where it decides what it's focusing on, what it needs to shoot. Um, so if you just tap that, and it's pretty quick. It's not the fastest shutter in the world, but it's not too bad at all. If you go into video, again, you've got various options on video. And then if you go into the settings here, you've got 1080p, 720p, QCIF, and you've also got 4K, which is just there. Um, and it's pretty much got flash options as well. So with flash you can have torch, off or torch, which is quite handy. If you go here, so you've got panorama, and it'll show you how you tap on that. You need to hold it in portrait mode to actually get the panorama. Um, you've got the bokeh, night, macro, HDR. It's not auto HDR, but to be honest, the smart mode, which is this one, the smart auto, is pretty good. But if we look at some photos, oh, hang on a sec. So you can't actually exit automatically, you have to hit the X there to come out, which actually was a feature people requested on this. So just get the optimum focus there. So on the Kodak, if you go to here, Super 8 is when you get the old Super 8 look of video and stills. You can do prints from here as well. But if you look at the gallery, if we look at some of the photos that I've taken. Let's just show you a few here. Um, I actually quite like some of these photos. They come out quite nicely. Um, you know, it's pretty good. That's a nice shot. Don't know if you can see that that's really good. But what you've got, if you turn this around this way, you've got various options in terms of editing. So you've got a nice editor built in. So you've got various filters here. So you can change the look on the fly very quickly. You go vintage, black and white, bleach, instant, latte, blue. Actually, 
Uh, go back to Lotto. That looks really nice. I actually quite like that in Lotto. Litho X Process. Uh, even the Litho one's quite nice. And then you can do some of the frames so you can add sort of different types of framing behind it and really create a really artistic shot. Um, quite a nice little editor. Um, you can crop as well. And then you've got various um, fine controls. You can do auto color as well, um, enhance. And here you can change anything from detail, size, strength, and contrast. And it's just a really nice um, photo editor. Um, and it's, it's all there. You can do an HDR. Wow, that is pretty nice. Um, so yeah, I'll just save that actually. Um, and I'm going to upload that and I'll leave a link below for that photo as well. That being my main uh, Gavin's Gadgets website. Um, overall, you know, in terms of, um, it's not as okay on calls. Um, sound quality is okay, it's not as average. Um, but this used to cost about, I think for, just over 400 pounds when it first came out. But at this um, current price, which is half of that at the moment, I think it's worth every penny. Um, <clears throat> It's quite nostalgic, it's something very different. And there you go, this is Gavin from Gavin's Gadgets. Catch you guys soon, bye for now.